Are you gonna sit up? Whoa, what are you doing? How oh, crazy. All right. All right. So we're gonna be watching the official behind the scenes gameplay trailer for The Last of Us Part Two. It's a new trailer? A new Another trailer. new trailer? Yeah. They keep giving out trailers. And that's what they do. Get people excited. That's how they do it. Hopefully. All right, here we go. Give you as many interesting actions to survive in this world and overcome Who's obstacles. Who's that, the girl? Obstacles could be infected, it could be other people, it could just be the environment. Is that it the girl that can't get infected? Water. Yeah. Anything it is? Anything happen yeah. in this post-apocalyptic world. Are you clean? Yeah. But more than anything, it needs to put you in Ellie's shoes, that you're experiencing what Ellie's experiencing, making you feel what she feels. Because the more we do that, the more the emotional beats of the story work for us, and the more they work oh, for us. Oh, hell yeah. Only works in video games. The gameplay philosophy of The Last of Us Part Two is putting you in the shoes of Ellie and everything that that means. It means giving you a threat constantly, as this world has. Now I see who Ellie you is. Hard choices. Yeah. Because this game now I'm understanding it. It's such is a that Ellie? Universe, and our characters looks like Ellie, right? No, she's to do really difficult things. We want to put you in alignment with those choices. We want you to understand how hard certain decisions were for these characters, because they're hard for you. It's OK, it's OK. I would say the overarching that Ellie? No. <laughs> Designing the game. Like Justin Bieber? Is how can we take things to the next, next level. level? To the next level. Big zombies that are fat. Yeah, basically. This story. Is that a dog? And how do we do it through systems? So, one is you have to feel the pressure of survival. Survive by the skin of my teeth. How do I use all these, all the scrap around me? It is any true. If they board, make it so that you're always on the edge of yeah. surviving, it does How make do it more give you that sense of being a survivor in this world. <laughs> that plant man. <laughs> Ellie is very small compared to Joel, and more nimble. How do we make you feel like you're not the strongest person in the room, but you still should be able to rise to the challenge and survive, you know, a fight with a bunch of people that are all bigger than you? So therefore it meant creating character and systems and mechanics that allow you to be much more nimble. And that's where we added um, a jump button. What? A jump button. And the first time we had a clamor button, but not really jumping. And here, Ellie can jump. The combat scenarios are much more vertical, where Ellie can use elevation to her advantage. Prone is a huge, huge one. Prone, obviously, it needs to lay flat on the ground. Uh, something so simple, yeah, that's again, cool. something that... That's cool, they don't have that at right? Not At least not in The Last of Us, they didn't Letting have it. But they have it Call of Duty or anybody? You can have it in Call of Duty. Can you just give it that low, like that? Yeah, you can do that position and it just creates so many more emergent um, things you don't usually play. see it in these type now of games that we have this like other state that the player really very low to the ground how else can we use this other than just hiding in vegetation We're like well there's a lot of man-made things or different yeah. structures that have collapsed that allow just enough space for you to crawl under which means that now as enemies are looking for you you can crawl under things and hide and it's just one more way to assess your environment and use it to Ellie's advantage. Now, because you can hide under things, we gave the enemies, we made them smarter and gave them the ability to look under things. So while you might hide somewhere and be safe for a while, eventually they're going to start looking under stuff. And if you're hiding under a truck and they spot you, they're going to yank you out and then try to kill you. Dodging is a big one because now with dodge, anytime you're in a you're in a a scuffle, you have a chance to get away. You have a chance to counterattack. It lets escape be an option as well. Sometimes you just gotta run. And that is another part of this world, which is sometimes the threat is so overpowering that you just have to get away. When you are partially hidden, or you're like you're in grass, yeah, that makes people from afar can't see you. But people from closer can kind of see you. 
they will eventually acquire. You're not completely hidden when you're in grass. Get your way into the grass. Watch yourself. And it makes you as a player become much more aware of your surroundings. Jump, prone, dodge, you know, all these things feed into both exploration and uh, combat because it lets us expand the space. If the size of spaces can be bigger, the intricacy of spaces can be more complex and it still works exactly as you would expect. So when it came to our level design, we really wanted to challenge ourselves to make a world that really felt like a real space as much as we possibly could and didn't feel like a series of combat encounters and exploration spaces and combat encounters that felt like a, a hall of horrors or something, um, but something that really felt like a space that you could explore that seemed like a legitimate uh, urban environment. And that pushed us to make our level design uh, even more open than it was in the first game, which for us at the time was, uh, was pretty open. In this game, we've gone so far in making the level design open uh, that there are actually entire story moments, entire combat encounters, like full scripted sequences that you may completely miss. And there are things that we feel yeah, like, uh, even though uh, a portion of our player base may never see these things, uh, the fact that when you do encounter them, you feel like you discovered them. It lends them this charm and this magic that I think is unique to games that, you know, this, this happened yeah, to me well, because of I what I did money. and what the place I was going to. No one thinks other people do it, so you make the well, Crafting is very much about a payoff to exploration, meaning that when you enter new spaces, you want to look around for supplies. You want to open drawers and cabinets um, and look for different things that will allow you to craft either items that can help you heal, items that can help you attack multiple enemies at once, such as the Molotov um, or the landmine that Ellie can craft. Items that can help augment your weapons, like a silencer for her pistol, um, or craft new kinds of ammo. It also gives us tons of interesting gameplay choices and overlaps that you can do at any moment and, and on the fly. We try to be a game that wants you to make a lot of different decisions in combat as possible. And the way that we've expanded the recipe roster and all of the recipes and how they interact with each other is carefully chosen for the different ingredients and making sure that you always have these interesting decisions to make. We put a much stronger emphasis on the importance of the choices you make in the long term for your character. What are you doing? Are you useful? Through the weapon upgrade system, through the player upgrade system, there aren't enough resources in a single playthrough to fully upgrade Come your on. character. Up. The up. choices that you make, you're going to have to live with. And we wanted to make sure that all of the choices that you made had a really noticeable and tangible effect on the way that you play. Definitely cool, man. You feel a greater kinship with Ellie really. because you are living with decisions that you've already made. Like you, you are continuing this through line of her journey through this world uh, and the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is influenced by that in a way that we haven't before. The realization that your choices have these long-term consequences is very much like the nature of the, the narrative of the game. Uh, and I'm happy that the mechanics are supporting that. All right. So it looks definitely an improvement over the first game, you would say, obviously, since you've seen it. Right? Uh, improvement, um, yeah, because now it's hand-to-hand -hand combat with her. It's still a good game. I think the other game was good too. Yeah, that's just a whole hopefully it's just more improvement. Yeah, it's just know? a different different whole atmosphere. It's just her really. Well, you're gonna be seeing Joel. Joel's gonna be in it. Oh really? Yeah, they're just not. Sh they showed him in the last one we watched, but uh, you know we got the. Yeah, get the game it looks see. good. It looks like there's more exciting uh, stealth elements that stealth they stealth. Yeah, fighting you could do. It's pretty cool. I mm -hmm. like it. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you're down. Leave a like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Cut the edit. Why you gonna add that? You wanna take her with you? No. Why would you add that? Take her. Nope. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on.